Hello, good morning. Today we are gonna see how we can program the LoRa E5 Mini from Seed. This time we're gonna program it using the ST Cube programmer. Unboxing it, you can see there is a serial USB cable, there is the itself the device, the antenna, and the pins for prototyping. In my previous video you would see how um, the device can be programmed using just a serial port. In this one we would need to soldier the pins for prototyping because we would need to program the device using the ST Cube ID programmer So to solder you just need to you know use a soldering device and uh, and just solder the, the the pins that's quite easy this is the result After you solder the pins you need to connect to this ST programmer now this has to be bought separately it's called ST Link V2 this has to be uh, bought separately and needs to be all connected only on three wires. The three wires connection will be shown on the video how to connect them. It's quite easy. The wires are included in the ST Link device that you buy on the net. At this point, you need to connect the USB C port to one USB port and the ST Link programmer to another USB port. You download two device two tools. One is called the Cube IDE from STM and the other one is called the Cube Programmer. That's all you need to program your device. Now you need to download from GitHub the link you'll find on the video the software that allows you to program the device using the STM Cube IDE. In this link you will also see the instructions how to do it but if you follow the video you will also you will be able to do it anyway. What we do now is uh, we launch uh, after you installed the IDE we, uh, we basically unzip the download that we did from the GitHub and you will see there is a lot of uh, directories. You open the IDE and then you start opening the project from file system. So you select open the project from file systems, you go and you select the directory, you go into the downloaded from GitHub, the downloaded code that you had and then you need to navigate in projects, applications, LoRa1, LoRa1 EndNode, and STM32 Cube ID, and you open. Here he will find the Eclipse project already done. You finish, and you will see on the on the upper left the LoRa LAN Eden node. Now, before you start, you need to do two things on the properties. You need to go on properties, and you need to go on C++ build settings. And from there, you need to say that you need to convert, when you compile, you need to convert the files into hex files. You also select the bin in case it's needed. You apply and you close. Now you go on the Things Network and you create your device. You should have already a login. If you don't, you can create one very easily. You go to applications. First thing you need to create an application. So I create a new application. I call it Carlo 4. Remember that the ID has to be in small letters, otherwise it doesn't work. Once you created the application, you need to create a device. 
So you register a device, and as you, so you see on the video, you have to do it manually. Frequency plan, the one recommended. You select version one, and then you have to apply the ABP personalization. So you generate a device EUI, you generate a device address, and then an application secret key and a network secret key. And you register the device. Now what you need to do, you need to store into a TXT file the, the three keys that you need to connect. One is the, the device address, the other is the uh, network secret key and the other the last one is the application secret key in my case I opened a txt file and I started copying and pasting all that information so I copied and pasted these three numbers into a txt file that I can use later to insert into my programming environment At this point, I go back to the IDE, I open the include files, and I select the files, all the include files that have the configuration of my device. And that's, as you can see, the LoRaWAN app. You open that and you'll find a lot of files below. What we are interested in is only basically a few files. One of them is called the sceidentity.h. In this one, we will need to modify a few things. For example, we need to say that it's a static device EUI, so you put one here. Then you need to say that the, there is a static device address, you put one here. And then what you do is you copy and paste the device address that we have saved from the things network into that h file as you see in the video we copy from the txt file that we created and we we modify the device address then the same thing for the lora one application key which is the second in my txt file, copy it and you put it on the include file .h. Now as you can see each byte is divided by a comma so we need to do that manually. Same thing for the network key. You need to also do it for the secret key. It's the same keys. Now it's possible that you just need the secret key, but just to be sure, I updated both the non-secret and secret key into the include files. This seems to work. This is the network one, so it's the same as the one above. And then there is the application one, which is again the same as it was before.
you save it just to be sure and then you go to the LoRa info include the file and check if there's something to modify here nothing to modify here remember you just modify the dot h never modify the dot c ones in this one you need to see if the active region is the one you want in this case is europe here we need to modify something the adr in my case it doesn't work so i need to put a, a static adr so i put on off this means that go static i can put the the dr at five and then i need to modify the activation type from OTA to ABP. Once this is done, you save. You can also take a look at other, other uh, include files, but there's nothing to change in the others if you want to make it work quickly. Once you save it, you click on the hammer and this should compile without errors. If there are errors, then there's something wrong. You need to do again the procedure. In my case, no, in my case, no errors, zero errors, zero warnings, perfect. Once that is done, now we need to switch to the programmer. So the programmer, the first thing you need to do with the programmer is you need to connect the device. Now, the ST-Link to connect it, it's sometimes is not that easy. I will tell you later how it works. But in first thing you need to do, once you connect it, you need to put that value to AA. So it means that level zero, you, there's no protection. Before, it was with the CC, with the chip protection. After you do that, you can program the device. How do you program the device? You'll see it. You go to the download. You put a verify and a run after programming. And then you browse to check the file. You go into still into the download side where we downloaded the code. You go in projects, applications, LoRaWAN, LoRaN EndNode, STM Cube, and then you go in debug. In debug, you will find the hex file. You select the X file and that's it. You start programming and the device starts getting programming. As soon as it starts, it will lose the link, the ST link. That's not a problem. This error, you can, you can, you can ignore it. Once that is done, you check on the serial port that the device is working. Actually, you will see on the on the messages that there are all the all the uh, all the data that you put in is reflected. Then you select the the things network and you see live data coming. As you can see, this is doesn't have any data. You just created the device today. Now, the device has sent already messages, but to a frequency that my gateway does not recognize. So I need to wait until the frequency. Is, is the correct one, which is the 8681.1. So at the moment, it's only going 868.5. So if you have a few moments, you will see that once it reaches that frequency with the DR5, we will see a message coming in to the things network. Here it is. So as you can see, uh, there is a new message coming in and, and basically what it's sending is the temperature and the power of the battery, which is 254, which is full power. So if you read the bytes there, uh, received and the payload, you will see that one of them is, uh, in, is in hexadecimal 17, which is 23, and the other one is FE, which is 254. 
and that's the data that is coming in to the things network one important thing that you need to know is that sometimes the um, ST link v2 does not connect to the programmer to avoid that to make it work you need to keep the reset button pressed while you program that should work